Now, I'm not trying to imply that the plot of this comic was an afterthought, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan K. Lindsay saw the phrase Dear Editor and thought to himself, Huh, what if I wrote a story about a journalist who's also a deer? Somebody find Ryan K. Lindsay! I have to know! Howdy, I'm Kurt Williams, and today we're looking at issue one of Dear Editor by Ryan K. Lindsay and Sammy Cavella. This is a hard-boiled detective story that follows an investigative journalist, who also happens to be a deer, as he follows a trail of murder that leads back to the city mayor. And it really just is a delight to read. This main character, who's a humanoid deer, is the only character in the whole story who's not a regular human, and they never mention that, which I think honestly makes it better. The fact that he's a deer means that he can smell clues, so that's pretty helpful, and he also gets poisoned at one point, but because he's a deer and has a more beastly frame. He can shrug off the effects of the poison. And he can also just attack people with his antlers if he feels like it, which is pretty metal. The entire story is like detective one-liner after detective one-liner. It's like a bunch of cliches strung all together, but it's, you know, campy and fun. It's got the typical detective story narration where he's speaking in first person with these, like, dusty, grim one-liners one after another. But it's also fun because his narration is clearly from the perspective of a deer person, not a regular person, but it doesn't bring too much attention to it that it would be weird. Like he says, There are nights so dark you can't see your nose at the end of your face. There are hearts so dark you can't see the evil until it's up to its hilt in your hide. It's just a friendly reminder that he's a deer and that is normal. And that subtle sense of humor is consistent throughout the comic, like in this panel, where he just casually chucks a bunch of hate mail into the trash, and obviously nobody addresses their letters with you suck or die you shitty editor, but it's just a fun, effective little way to show us that people kind of hate him, which just goes to further show that he's probably pretty good at his job. Or like this moment where he gets hit by a car and then he's blacked out and all it says is, I will be so pissed if I'm tied to their roof. That's pretty funny. There's a few pages in a row that are pretty funny actually. Like this page right here has this panel where his assistant delivers him some hate mail that's clearly a poisoned cake and he says, smells like cake. And then the main character's inner monologue says, smells like poison. And just look at how angry he is. He's so angry. I love it. So the issue as a whole is very campy and fun and has really quick dialogue. It's very quick paced, but I do kind of wish it wasn't quite as quick paced. I feel like they jammed a lot of stuff into this first issue and it just goes by really fast and I don't have a lot of time to let things sink in before it's already happened and we've moved on. And I know that sometimes writers feel pressured to get their whole story into just four or five issues because publishers don't want to commit to any more than that. They want to see if people actually want to buy it and then if they do want to buy it, then they can extend it out to 10 or 12 issues. But this issue was kickstarted, so maybe they had other concerns when they were writing it, like maybe he didn't want to spend too much time on this project. Maybe he didn't want to hire the artist for longer than he had to. I don't know. Either way, I wish that it could slow down and take some time to breathe. Especially because I kind of got lost following the mystery. And look, I'll admit that I'm not the smartest guy on the planet, and I've always admired writers who can do this whole elaborate mystery with clues and have everything set up so that the reader slowly understands what's going on. But there are a couple things in particular that kind of came out of nowhere in this issue. Like, he makes a note about this locker full of blank, and then he goes and copies a key and gets into the locker, and what he finds in the locker is a bag full of weapons. But there's been no reference to that locker earlier in the story. I don't know why he's even thinking about that. I don't know where the locker is or who's it supposed to be. I just don't know. Also, towards the end of the story, the main character, whose name is Bucky, by the way, figures out that the mayor is buying up property in this one particular area and then shooting the people who won't sell to him. But I don't know how he figured that out. That just kind of came out of nowhere. And then at the very end, it turns out that it's not about the mayor buying property. It's about some kind of family issue. And that's even more confusing to me. And this lady tried to attack him. And I still don't really know why, but it seems like Bucky has an idea of why. However, even though I'm confused, I'm having enough fun reading each scene that I don't mind waiting for the narrative to kind of clear up some things for me. If I suspend my disbelief, then I can just believe that this guy is better at investigating things than I am, which makes sense because he's a good investigative journalist. So if I missed something that he picked up on, I can just say, well, he's better at this than I am. But maybe I just missed something that I didn't realize I missed. If you read the issue and everything makes perfect sense to you, please do explain it to me because I want to know what's going on. As you probably noticed already, the comic is exclusively in blue, black, and white, which is an interesting choice, and I think that it's appropriate for this kind of story. It feels kind of like a black and white movie, but a little bit more modern. It's got that kind of Dick Tracy vibe to look at. I think the artist Sammy Cavella is doing a pretty good job here. I wouldn't say that his art is in my, like, top 10 artists of all time category, but he's doing a pretty good job. I especially like the panel where they introduce Bucky because he just has so much power in that pose and the creases in his shirt are so well done and the line weight is really good. 
that's just a really good panel. Sometimes we get panels that look straight out of like the 1950s with their classic kind of campy comic art style to them where the faces are just the contours and not so much the actual shadows. But other times we get these nice, easy to look at, very artistic looking faces. And one thing that I really like about the art is that he puts a lot of attention into the scenery, into the backgrounds of each panel. A lot of artists won't bother drawing much detail in the backgrounds unless it's a very specific thing that we have to notice. Like in SpongeBob cartoons where they paint the whole background but then one very specific thing is animated and you know they're gonna interact with that thing. That is not the case in this comic. Cavella puts a lot of effort into the entire background so that it feels like a very realistic world that the characters live in. It's not just about the characters, it's about the world. And I know that a common concern with putting detail into the backgrounds is that it's gonna get overly busy and your subject is gonna get lost in all the background detail. But I don't know, I think he's doing a pretty good job here of making depth in the panel, keeping the composition easy to look at and easy to understand. So the attention to detail is definitely one of the strengths of this comic. And there's a whole lot of other little stuff in this comic that I really like, but I don't want to spoil it for you because I think you should go and buy it. It's pretty good stuff. It's a lot of fun to read. It's campy and it's cute, but it's also well realized and it's a satisfying plot. So I'm going to give issue one a dear editor like an 8 out of 10. I was a little confused, but I had a lot of fun reading it and I think you will too. So what you need to do is call your local comic shop on the phone and say, hey, give me issue one of dear editor and then put me on the pull list for all following issues. And then they'll say, ah, I can see you are a person of very distinguished taste. Of course, I am happy to order those issues for you. And that's the magic of the comic book industry. So that's my rating, 8 out of 10. Did you read it? What do you think?